React has a new view transition component coming out that's going to help us use the awesome view transitions feature that is built right into the browser. Is it ready for prime time? Let's go take a look right now. To help us explore the basics of this view transitions component, let's start off with a very simple demo. In the GitHub repo associated with this video, you'll find three directories in there. The one that we're going to take a look at right now is VTTW demo for view transitions, tailwind demo. Let's go check it out. Let's go fire it up. All right, so this is what it looks like. We got a nice looking guitar here. And if we just click anywhere on the page, it goes through these different locations. Let's go and take a look over at the code. Code is pretty simple. We got an array of positions here. Those are all just transforms that we then apply to this image of the guitar that then wrapped in this div that then sets the position. So every time we click through, we just cycle through those listed positions. Now, as you can see, when we do it, right, it's pretty jerky, right? It's just kind of doon, 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 going from spot to spot to spot. So is there a better way to do this? Can we just add animations really easily? And yes, we can. We can use view transitions to do that. To do this, we're going to start out using this new experimental view transitions component that's baked right into React. We are currently on React 19, so we need to upgrade our React version first. Do that, we'll go over to package.json, and then we'll scroll down to our React dependency, and we'll change it from the current 19.0 to an experimental branch, and let's go and reinstall. We'll run again, just to make sure that it's still working. Everything looks great. So now let's make use of our new view transition component. To do that, we need to import it. We simply map unstable view transition to view transition. Unstable is how they prefix anything that's upcoming that you need to know is experimental before you use it. And we will then wrap our image in that view transition. All right, let's hit save. And now if we click around, well, there's no change. So why is it actually doing anything? Well, what we need to do to activate this view transition is to actually use the use transition that's been there for a while in React to activate the view transition. So bring in the use transition hook. Now we'll invoke that hook and what we get back is an array. The first item in the array is transition that tells us whether we're actually in the middle of a transition, it's a Boolean. And then there's a function start transition that can allow us to start the transition. I'm going to use that start transition to wrap my set position in a transition. So all we really need to do is a start transition. I give it a function. That in turn does that set position, and let's see. Oh, that is sweet. Check that out. It's actually doing the rotation as well as the position animation. That's just amazing. But it is important to understand exactly what's happening under the hood here. So let's do this actually without this component and see what the difference is. So I'm going to comment out view transition. And instead of this start transition, I'm going to instead use this awesome web platform directly by using document.startViewTransition and then giving it that same function to set the position. And let's hit save and try again. All right, now that actually does work. But to make this reliable, what we really should do is make sure that the entire DOM is updated by the time that that view transition call ends. So in order to do that, what we should do is use the flush sync capability built into React DOM. What flush sync does is it make sure that by the end of the flush sync call that the entire DOM has been updated. To do that, I bring in flush sync from React DOM, and then I wrap that set position again in that flush sync, and now make sure that absolutely reliably we get that transition. All right, so this is looking pretty good. We're getting this kind of fading transform. Well, that's okay, but what we really want to do is get back to that positional thing where it animates the position as well as the rotation. What we need to do is highlight for the view transition system that this particular element, this image, is something we want to animate through all of its changes to its CSS. So, so I'm gonna give a specific view transition name to this element, I'm gonna call it guitar. Now let's see what happens. So now we get this excellent animation and we kind of see what view transition had been doing for us, which was to automatically add a name to the interior element, this image, now that's gonna be auto by default, but you can name it yourself, just say name is guitar. Now, why do you wanna have these names? Well, when you think about it, if you're transitioning between one state and another, like let's say that you've got a, a small image that's becoming a hero image, 
those might be actually two different elements. But if you give them the same view transform name, then it'll do the animation between those two things, even if it's not the same element, which is really cool. All right, now I learned about this new view transition component as part of the next 15.2 release. So let's go see a larger example and see it in the context of next. So I'm going to stop the current example. I'm going to go over to next guitars and then start up that example. All right, so here's our beautiful demo app for Next.js 15.2 themed around guitars. You can see some animations here as I'm just scrolling around. Those are not view transitions. The view transitions are wrapped around the guitar here. So when I click it, it kind of animates into its new position. Now that's actually really cool and it did work there, but I do find that it's kind of inconsistent. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't and it's frustrating. The same component, same location, no changes to any kind of code gives you different results at different times. And I think that might be related to some heuristics that are built into this new view transition tag. So we go to the 15.2 release notes for React View Transitions and take a look at the original view transition pull request. You can see that down here in the documentation, it highlights a bunch of heuristics and those are meant to solve issues in view transforms. And I think as I'm looking at this right now in its early alpha state, it, it it's kind of adding an inconsistency and I think this might have something to do with it. But let's jump into the code and let me show you how this works in Next.js 15.2. So over next guitars, the first thing to do is make sure that you're on next 15.2. That's really cool. But notice we're also on React 19 here, and I know that the functionality is built into an experimental branch. So how is that actually happening? Because it's not released in 19. Well, what's actually happening is if I look over here in the app directory and I go to my page and I bring in the version from React, and then I console log out that version, hit save. Now this is an RSC page. So that's actually going to run on the server. So let's take a look down here. We can see this is actually running 19.1.0 experimental. So there's actually another version of React that's baked into Next.js that has these experimental features. And that's the one that we're running on when we're running in RSC mode. That is not what we're seeing over here in that package.json. And this is a well-known thing we've known about for a long time. The other thing you need to do to enable this view transition system is to go over to your next config and then in the experimental section, set view transition to true. Now, after that, we can go over here to our page and we can see that right at the top, we're bringing in that unstable view transition, mapping it to view transition from React. So again, then we're wrapping that image in that view transition tag, but this time we're giving it a templated name and we're adding on the guitar ID. And the reason we're doing that is that we want the hero to go from the small mode here to the large mode and do that view transition. Note that it didn't actually do that view transition there. And then when we go back, we want it to return specifically to that guitar. So we want to go kind of zoom in and then zoom back out again. So we use that ID to track that particular guitar image. And we can see that that detail page has the exact same ID and that's how it maps that guitar image from the small size to the large size and then back again. Now, as I say, it's kind of inconsistent here in Next. Maybe that has a little bit to do with the router. So I figured, well, you know what? Let's try TanStack Router and see if it's any better there. And so I, what I did was I brought in that experimental branch into TanStack Router, tried it out. It had a similar kind of flakiness. So what I did instead was go with TanStack Router's built-in support for view transitions. And let me walk you through how I did that. So I'm going to start up the TanStack start version of this. Looks pretty much identical. You can click on a guitar, you can get the detail, you can go back. So let's add some view transitions and see how difficult that is. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my router. And then as part of my router setup, I'm going to enable default view transition. Go back over to our browser and then click. And as we can see, we immediately get view transitions. So we're starting to get that fade in and fade out effect. And you know, maybe that's enough for you, but I, you know, I really want that kind of zoom in and zoom out thing. So let's go and add that to our app. Now the guitar image on the index page is right here. So I'll add in that view transition name. And then on the detail page, I'll do exactly the same thing. And now let's try it out. Oh, that's beautiful. And as we can see, it is very reliable. It always works. And I'm a genuine fan of things always working. Now let's have a little bit more fun with view transitions. I want this description here on the detail page to kind of come up into the page 
fade in and slide up. So how would we do something like that? So let's go back into our code. Here's the description section right at the top here. I'm going to add on a view transition name. We'll call that description. And then I'm going to go add some CSS to support that view transition. So at the end of my styles file, I'm going to bring in my animations. So here are my simple definitions for slide in and slide out. We're going to transform it to move it and then change the opacity to make it fade. So now we're going to couple those generic animations to our view transition by using the view transition new and view transition old pseudo selectors and giving them description as the name. And then we get to say whatever animation we want and how long it's going to take and all that. So let's hit save, try it out and see what happens. All right, let's go in, and as we can see, yeah, that description is sliding up into the page. Just so beautiful. All right, there you have it. Not one, but two different ways of doing view transitions in React. You got the Tanstack Rider version that's currently released that is very solid and robust, and then you got this awesome new experimental view transition system being built into React. I encourage you to play with all of it, and if you have any questions or comments, be sure to jump into the comment section right down below and let me know about that. In the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.